Hello everyone, this is Sanskriti Tripathi from Jaipuria Institute of Management Indore, welcoming you on our podcast. Today, we are honored to have with us Ms. Shalini Goyal Bhalla. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you. Ms. Shalini Goyal Bhalla is a leading expert in the field of circular economy. Recently, she has been awarded by Ministry of Environment and External Affairs of Finland on her, fee, on, her, on her work in the field of climate change. So now, today we are going to dwell deep into the topic of circular economy and sustainability and get some real insight from someone who is working on that field. Thank you ma'am for joining us on this podcast. It's a pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, you, your contribution in the field of sustainability and especially in circular economy is nothing short than a remarkable. But what convinced you to start your project and you're working in the field of circular economy? Well, uh, I was working on a project uh, of net zero uh, when I first came across the term of circular economy. And something uh, told me when I saw the policies, the work that was happening in EU and in the US on circularity, uh, something told me that this subject is going to gain importance even in India. And so the first uh, endeavor that I uh, got into was bringing this knowledge to India about what circular economy is all about. So I started to write my book uh, on circular economy. It's called Circular Economy Re-Emerging Moment uh, because in my book I delve uh, not only on the sectoral practices of how industries could lead to a circular transition, but I also talk about some sustainable practices in India. Uh, A very simple example would be sun drying of clothes. Uh, because mostly if you see the developed countries uh, they use dryers to uh, dry their clothes but in India we do it in the open balconies Uh, and so uh, what is the how to associate that with uh, the the climate change or the greenhouse gas emissions that are associated by with using a dryer I actually put them into numbers and is published in my book and that one particular chapter it's called old wine in new bottle where i am talking about how the old indian practices are highly sustainable and circular in nature uh, whereas uh, the developed countries are still looking at it another example that i quote is about uh, the use of uh, yoga um, instead of gym so how sustainable and circular is doing the yoga practicing yoga which is a holistic exercise in it itself as compared to gym which is a very specific exercise for a particular body part and also the energy that goes into running a a, a gym Uh, so uh, that was the idea the idea was to take circular economy to masses uh, to talk about how each sector could look at circular transition uh, also to cover up uh, this topic with the younger generation so I kept my book very simple Uh, the wordings no big jargons no difficult terminology Uh, I relate to students and the other very important thing that I wanted to do was keep it at a minuscule cost so that every Indian could buy it so that was the initial idea of doing it the next idea was to start the council uh, so that we could have a bigger impact at the policy level at the innovation level and I'm very happy to see how the council has become from a national body to an international body and is emerging as a pioneer think tank in the country uh, also globally in circularity so that's how i think it started but uh, as we progress i think we will make many other we are yet to reach many other milestones i think your book is the first book in the field of circular economy in india yes. in india yes ma'am. also when we talk about sustainability we often connect it with the corporate social responsibility practices the corporate follow in india as per the regulations of companies at 2013 we see so is the csr activity activities and their its regulation in these certain acts is sufficient for a companies to follow the sustainability see uh, csr is a mandate that has come uh, we must understand that the indian companies are not only mandated by the regulations that come or the legislations that come Uh, It is not so that the Indian companies were not working in sustainability before the CSR came. They were donating, we have a culture of donating, uh, of sharing, 
but yes uh, csr has made a mandate of doing that by putting in 2% cap on it uh, so yes there has been a sea change in the way companies have started looking to sustainability but there is a transition also that we can see happening initially it was taken as a legislation as a regulation by the government of india and how uh, the ministry of corporate affairs came with this regulation but gradually uh, the industry is also understanding that while they are consuming all sort of resources they have a responsibility of giving it back and so uh, when we talk about csr they don't only look at the social aspect of it they look at also the environmental aspect of it they also look at the socio economic impact that they can make on the society uh, i see a lot of companies now working towards women empowerment looking at how the tribal people could be kind of imp- the, the standard of living could be improved so these are certain areas education health all these areas have contributed a lot in india's growth story and i think uh, yes uh, while companies do look at it as a mandate they also look at it as a responsibility and that's how india is progressing towards csr these days uh, we'd be any industry we talk about the fast fashion industry or any industry the common thing we are coming up with sustainability so the way sustainable uh, sustainable word and the sustainability concept is getting famous is in the same way are the companies and uh, we are adopting it i would say companies are adopting it faster than anyone else uh, maybe as a individual we may not be aware of what it is most of the times when i talk uh, sustainability is uh, very much correlated with the environmental aspect but if you look at sustainable development goals there are these 17 16 plus 1 goal and they talk about everything they talk about gender they talk about poverty they talk about hunger and i believe all the initiatives by the industries that are happening uh, are happening towards one or the other sustainable development goal and the uh, industry is very well inclined towards their responsibility i see uh, companies working in different sectors knowing that if i am talking about uh, let's say drinking they do talk about road safety as an initiative uh, so they do understand that while they are out there uh, they are also they have a responsibility of promoting responsible driving responsible drinking habits uh, there are companies uh, who are working in fashion but at the same time are talking about uh, different methods i mean fast fashion i mean companies are driven by the profit uh, scales but uh, at the same time they are aware of the fact that we need to talk about a different thing bring in circularity and sustainability into our business practices so they are looking at maybe other models are the business models uh, sustainable procurement sustainable policies within their industry uh, not only through the csr angle but also from their own business practices to become more sustainable and i think uh, the esg reporting uh, uh, the brsr reporting uh, is also making it more easier and understandable for the company as to how they want to or will they progress towards also ma'am these days whenever we talk about sustainability it is often seen that the uh, there are many courses in the colleges also which promote sustainability and trying to teach and inculcate the habit of sustainability and the thinking of sustainability in the mind of their student so what is your suggestion to the student those who are going to be a future leader how we can take ahead this sustainability uh, i believe uh, one thing with a new generation that i find is uh, keeping them updated about the latest information what's happening in india what's happening globally so one of the important very important uh, uh, suggestion or advice to the younger generation would be to read newspapers and keeping themselves abreast i see that the habit of reading newspapers is almost vanishing uh, you people are more on instagram and the news that you consume is more from instagram and whatsapp than any other news uh, source uh, and when you read about the global news when you read about what's happening across the globe you are able to consume where are we leading to what what's happening and that international perspective uh, 
helps to shape up your thought process and so you know i think uh, while there are these courses while there is a theory there is a discussion that will keep happening on sustainability in the academia a lot of uh, approach that would be rather uh, a project based approach i would say uh, uh, internships as uh, has been i think mandated by many colleges that you have to do so much hour of social work uh, if done and integrated into the system uh, will then shape up the younger generation into a more responsible uh, generation uh, also i think it is very important because today the supply chains are international and most of the businesses they look at not only supplying within the country but globally uh, india is aiming to be uh, 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 civic set by 2047 won't happen unless we have huge long supply chains global international businesses and if we have to achieve that uh, it will also bring huge responsibility in terms of what are the policies or what are the uh, areas what are how it is impacting our businesses so uh, a policy in let's say us or in eu could impact the businesses in india very well so how do we kind of mitigate that Keep, again keeping yourself updated about all that information is very essential and uh, that would be my one thing uh practice sustainability at individual level uh behavior change and i think mission life which was introduced by our honorable prime minister uh is uh, another very important uh behavioral change exercise which is an international movement uh keeping yourself abreast with the latest uh, uh policies international and innovation as well and i think using technology to the best of it is something that would help to in, in, to make a sustainable impact at a larger scale overall the onus is now us on the younger generation to carry this legacy well and to take india and to make india from a developing country to a developed nation like this it the onus lies on every one of us not only the younger generation i'm sure it is on us it is on the younger generation uh, more so on us i would say because uh, we have to leave a cleaner and a greener and planet for you uh, which you can then take forward so i think it's a mutual responsibility a mutual call for all of us yes i think sustainability also talks about something to leave it for a uh, coming generation that's or a right. coming time that's right thank, thank you. you so much ma'am thank you so much for your grateful words we are really grateful to you thank you for taking out time and sparing and sharing your knowledge hard earned knowledge with us thank you so much it was a pleasure talking to you